Hello and welcome back to Char Reads. Today I'm going to be talking about The Dutch House by Anne Patchett. This came out in 2019 um, and it follows a pair of siblings, Danny and Maeve, who's seven years older. It's told from the perspective of Danny. Their mother abandons them when they're children and their father remarries a woman called Andrea who has two younger children um, and then the father dies when Danny is 14 and Danny and Maeve are left with nothing apart from a college fund. Danny fully trains as a doctor despite wanting to go into real estate and their lives just sort of evolve. The Dutch House is the main setting and a large character in this book. The Dutch House is a very architecturally confusing building <laughs> um, that was built by uh, this couple called the Van Hoobakes before they disappeared and uh, Danny and Maeve's father bought it sort of as a gift for their mother but the mother absolutely hated it and it was a large reason for her leaving the family. Danny and Maeve are obsessed with this building and even after they're kicked out once their father dies and they can't go back they often will drive up to it and just sit in the car outside and look up to it and they do this for decades. It's a book about letting go it is a book about trying to understand and empathise with your parents while not repeating the same mistakes they did. This was a good book. It was fun to read. Uh, I found the sort of chosen family that the characters have in their housekeepers and nannies, uh, Sandy, Jocelyn and Fluffy, really lovely and it's really like cosy, especially towards the end where all these people that you've been with for decades um, are like all together and it's very nice. But it didn't move me. I never really cared about the house as a character, so I didn't understand the pull of it or the push of it. So it just wasn't as profound a read as it seems to have come off to many people. Also Maeve is clearly the best character ever. She's super sharp, she's super self-assured, um, and I loved her and then I was sad to see her not really make anything of herself. I do think that she was secretly gay, but yeah, let's not go into that. The main thing I want to talk about in this book is determinism. So as I said, they go sit outside this Dutch house regularly for decades um, and then something happens that means that they they suddenly like snap themselves out of it and they say, I'm done with Andrea, I'm making a pledge to you right here, I'm done with this house, I'm not going back anymore. And later on the page, Maid says, just imagine um, if this had happened uh, sooner, maybe 20 years ago. And Danny says we could have had our lives back. And it's a trope I see in fiction that I really hate, which is when some often small thing in characters, histories, especially childhood, suddenly completely controls the trajectory of their entire lives and it's very fatalistic and I know that the reason this annoys me so much is that in many ways it is how the world works it's very true but in a book like this it's just so unsubtle that it really grates on me similarly there's a lot of repetition over the generations um both of like practical like medical issues that happen to people but also the sort of mirroring of Danny and May's father's relationship with the mother and Danny's relationship with his wife and it all felt really really neat but maybe just like a bit too neat for me. It was so forcefully trying to make this point that you are kind of trapped in whatever shit your parents gave you and I feel that just takes away all of the agency from these individual characters to the point that they're like puppets, which I don't like. It makes me sad and it makes me afraid for the same in my life. I feel this is something I've definitely talked about in a video before and I'd love to hear your thoughts on whether that's like a realistic portrayal of these generational traits and situations or um, and like that's just how the world works and we should all get used to it um, or whether it feels like in books th this one in particular it does feel that's been sort of put on for effect. The other thing I want to talk about in this book is wills. <laughs> So I work at a will writing company. It's called Fair Will. If you are in the UK and you need a will, farewill.com. And it's such a wonderful Easter egg to me when the entire plot of a novel revolves around the fact that someone hasn't left a will. He said, dad didn't think he was old enough for a will. You're never too young for a will. <laughs> this isn't a discussion topic I want to have around this book. This is a PSA to you. Get yourself a will. It does not matter how young you are, but especially if you own property, if you have children or pets, you need to make a will. You may be like, it's fine because I want everything to pass over to my spouse anyway. 
um, but you may not actually. Um, and do you want to assign guardians to your children? Do you want to give your friends and family some idea of how you'd like to be memorialized so they don't have to deal with the grief of you dying as well as trying to plan a funeral service where they don't know what you would have wanted? Dear God, get a will, please. That's why I made this video. I wanted to tell you to get a will and that was basically it. And I am overheating, so we don't need to talk about anything else about this book. But I'd love to hear if you read it, was it like, life-changingly magical did you really care about the dutch house because i was just like mm, nice read characters are good sure i hope you've enjoyed this video even if it was a little brief um i will see you in the next one goodbye